Welcome back everyone, it's Charlie. This will be my full video for the Spider-Man No Way Home more fun edition, like the extended edition of the movie with a bunch of new footage. There were 11 new minutes, so I'll explain what all the scenes were. There was like a completely alternate post credit scene that sort of recontextualizes the way that Spider-Man's spell works, kind of clarifying some things, along with a whole bunch of extra scenes of like all three Spider-Man and new Daredevil scenes. So we'll break it all down. If you're brand new to the channel, be sure to subscribe to get all the videos. Careful for spoilers from the movie if you haven't seen it yet. I'm pretty sure that most people around the world, most places, have had a chance to see at least one version of the movie. There were a billion deleted scenes, so obviously not every single one got added back in for this extended edition. I've done several deleted scenes videos, so I'll link them in the description below so you can learn about some of the other deleted scenes that didn't make it into this edition. So starting with the new stuff, the first new scene is right at the beginning of the movie, before the actual movie begins. They added a special introduction with all three Spider-Men, Andrew Garfield, Tobey Maguire, and Tom Holland introducing the movie, talking about how excited they were to all come back and play their versions of Spider-Man again, like Tobey Maguire and Andrew Garfield finally coming back, continuing the story of their characters, how they all loved working with each other. Tobey Maguire and Andrew Garfield have both talked extensively about wanting to come back again, but that might not happen until Avengers 6 Secret Wars. They could always come back in other projects too. Everybody wanting them to make Amazing Spider-Man 3 for Andrew Garfield and Spider-Man 4 for Tobey Maguire. But then the next actual new scene during the actual movie is when Peter and everyone get arrested by Agent Cleary and damage control and get hauled in for questioning. So the new scene is actually when they actually barge into Aunt May's new apartment and start questioning them before they haul them to damage control. They question Peter about the Washington Monument incident during the events of Spider-Man Homecoming when he saved his classmates after one of the Tinker and the Vulture stolen Shatari artifacts explodes. And it ends with them slapping a photo down, demanding that Peter tell them everything he knows about the Night Monkey. Just more Night Monkey jokes from Spider-Man Far From Home. The funny thing about the Night Monkey is that Sony actually released a special Night Monkey trailer when they were promoting that movie after it had come out. The whole joke about the actual Night Monkey started because of the black stealth suit while they were in Europe, and it was because of what Ned Leeds called him during the big fight scene. Then Betty Brant started calling him that too, and that's how the Night Monkey thing spread to the news and why Damage Control knows about the name, the Night Monkey. The next new scene is the deleted scene of Tom Holland's real-life brother, Harry Holland. He sees him running off trying to steal someone's purse and then hauls him up with his webbing. You see a version of this happening in the background when he got the green paint thrown on him. After he hauls his brother up with his webbing, the crowd around him starts yelling at him saying he's too young to have been doing all these adventures, getting involved in the larger Avengers level stuff. One of the women in the crowd keeps calling Peter 14 years old, even though he's way older than that during the events of this movie. He starts arguing with the crowd and it kind of turns into another version of the argument with the crowd that you saw at the beginning of the movie when he's trying to save MJ. Another angry crowd member shouts at him, saying that he and the purse snatcher, which he just caught, are probably in cahoots. And his younger brother in the scene, Harry Holland, says, yes, yes, we've been in cahoots the whole time. So his younger brother did have an actual line of dialogue in the movie. But the line is meant to be a meta reference to the fact that Harry Holland, his younger brother, has been helping Tom Holland in real life while he's been playing Spider-Man since the events of Captain America Civil War. So they kind of have been in cahoots this whole time, just in real life. The next new scene is when they go back to school after the arrest, like after Daredevil has saved them. After the scene where the teachers, Mr. Harrington, get all weird with him, he goes to his next class and the new scene starts with him in gym class and it's Coach Wilson and the rest of the class egging him on to show his powers by climbing the gym wall. All the kids in class are gossiping about him, saying things like, he used to be my lab partner, and they start chanting, climb it, climb it, talking about the wall. And once he does start climbing it, Coach Wilson sort of softly under his breath, Hannibal Burris's character says, what a sick bastard. Remember, the whole idea during the movie is that Coach Wilson was one of the people who believed Mysterio and thought that Spider-Man was a criminal. Then Peter runs down the hall past Flash Thompson, who's in the middle of a book signing for the tell-all book about Spider-Man that he wrote. He tries to say hello to Peter as if they really are best friends because he'd been lying up to that point like, yeah, me and Spider-Man have been best friends this whole time. And as he runs by Flash Thompson, a bunch of the girls swoon at him and one of them calls him cute. Then probably one of the longest new scenes that they added is this extended scene with Betty Brant doing a news broadcast like they do it just like they did during Spider-Man Far From Home. She's sitting in a very pink room on a big ornate masterpiece theater style chair like it's this very baroque looking type of news broadcast she's doing where she's interviewing Coach Wilson, Mr. Harrington, and Mr. Dell, J.B. Smoove's character, as well as Flash Thompson and Ned Leeds, and then eventually Peter Parker himself. If the spider that gave you your powers were here right now, what would you say? Would you say thanks or thanks for nothing? I, I, would, I would say thanks. 
for nothing. There's a joke about Coach Wilson not believing that Justin Timberlake was actually part of NSYNC. Mr. Harrington starts saying all these sad things about his ex-wife and going to deep dives on Reddit. Mr. Dell talks about how sexy he would have been if he'd have been bitten by the spider and become Spider-Man. Flash Thompson keeps trying to promote his tell-all book that he wrote, taking credit for the name Spider-Man like he claims that he's the person who named him Spider-Man. Betty Brant grills him on other possible names like Arachno Kid and The Bitten. She gets pissed off with him because she's not featured in the tell-all book. When she's interviewing Ned Leeds, they have a bunch of jokes about their former relationship during the events of Spider-Man Far From Home, about how he's been sending her all these texts and it's super awkward between them. There's a fake commercial about a Statue of Liberty design contest where one person has dressed the statue as Mysterio. Then the next new scene is of him bringing Ned Leeds and MJ to the actual Sanctum Sanctorum. They have a quick montage of them setting up in the Undercroft and they play the Monster Mash song. There's a bunch of extra scenes of Ned trying to rearrange a bunch of weird stuff. And probably like the big moment during the scene is when they're picking through all just the junk lying everywhere and they find a miniature model. It's like a perfect mini replica of the Sanctum, like a mini Doctor Strange just walking around all over this Sanctum model. And they all just kind of look at each other like, wait, what? What the hell? The next new scene is of an extra broadcast of the Daily Bugle with J. Jonah Jameson. They added a bunch of new footage of him. It's a quick montage of him yelling a bunch of different things about Spider-Man. One of the biggest parts of this is J. Jonah Jameson doing a phone interview with an electric company employee named Walter Burke who recounts to him what went down at the power lines, the events of Spider-Man capturing Electro during the movie. J. Jonah Jameson makes a big deal about how he's this super credible witness who's telling him about what Spider-Man did, but then quickly regrets it after the electric company employee starts talking about all the other Sinister Six villains, about how Spider-Man fought a power man and a dirt man. To which J. Jonah Jameson doesn't believe, like, what? A man made of dirt? A man made out of electricity? That's ridiculous. Then they have the new Daredevil Matt Murdock scene. So later in the events of the movie, after the first Daredevil scene, like well after it, they pay off the joke about Happy having to hire a very good lawyer. Where Happy Hogan has retained Matt Murdock as his actual lawyer and they're in the middle of a deposition with damage control. It's this scene right here. But instead of paying attention, Happy keeps looking at his phone, which is sending him alerts because of his weird security system, and he watches as all the Sinister Six villains are caught on camera getting into the elevator, coming into his apartment. His phone keeps giving off alerts, and Matt Murdock keeps yelling at him like, Happy, you gotta stop looking at your phone. This is bad. He also tells Happy, you have to stop sweating. It makes you look very guilty. To which Happy says, how do you do that? Like, how do you stop sweating? The next new scene is like an extended scene of all three Spider-Man on the Statue of Liberty before the actual battle starts. They discuss how lucky they think all the Sinister Six villains are going to be now that they're going to get a second chance in their lives because they're curing them. Peter 3, Andrew Garfield's character, says that he's loving this and says they should do it again. We should do this again. You got it. Just setting out the idea that they will return again during Avengers 6 Secret Wars, possibly in some other future project besides that. Because when he says, let's do this again, he says, next time, let's do it without all the potential for us dying. And then Andrew Garfield, Spider-Man, talks to Tobey Maguire, Spider-Man, saying, I'll grab your number after. Talking about how they'll team up on their own separately from this. Hopefully they'll pay that off sometime soon, too. Then they go into a slightly different joke about the organic web shooters that Tobey Maguire has. They ask if when he uses the organic web shooters, it's a clean release, like if it leaves a bunch of mess on him. Does he do it with his mind? Does he just think web and the web comes out? And then Tobey Maguire's Spider-Man says that he can't explain it. It's sort of like riding a bike. And Andrew Garfield's Spider-Man says, I want to see the holes. Talking about the holes in his wrist where the webbing actually comes out. Then probably one of the other biggest new scenes is the completely alternate post credit scene. So this post credit scene is Betty Brandt on her TV show at the school reminiscing about graduating high school like it's at the very end of events in the movie. She says, it seems like only yesterday that we were starting an adventure called high school and what an adventure it's been. During her broadcast, they show another cringy kind of funny montage of the events of Spider-Man Homecoming, Spider-Man Far From Home, some from the Washington Monument, some from their adventures in Europe with Mysterio. So like they go on all these crazy adventures, all the same stuff happened to them, but it's as if the spell has erased Peter Parker from all these events. Remember, the spell didn't erase Spider-Man, so like Spider-Man would still appear in pictures if they took pictures of him. But if it's Peter's actual face, that's what's disappeared and that's what they've forgotten about. Which is why all the Avengers characters, for instance, remember Spider-Man fighting with them during Avengers Infinity War and Avengers Endgame. But like during Doctor Strange Multiverse of Madness, they treat it like they don't know that Peter Parker is Spider-Man. They just know that there is a Spider-Man who has worked with them in the past. 
Betty Brant continues her broadcast talking about the events of the blip, Avengers Infinity War, ending the broadcast talking about how they'll cherish all their memories, showing pictures of them also with Peter Parker erased from all the photographs because of the spell. She ends the broadcast signing off saying, Happy graduation, go Tigers! Which is also a bit of a reference to the classic Mary Jane phrase, Go get them, Tiger! But really this post credit scene is just meant to hammer home the idea of how exactly the spell erases memory of him, which is why he has to get the GED because nobody remembers his school records because they were taken as records for Peter Parker himself. If there's any other Easter eggs in these deleted scenes or any other scenes in general that you spotted during the extended edition that I didn't mention during the video, just write them below in the comments. There's a bunch of big stuff coming up. My Full House of the Dragon Episode 3 video will post Sunday just like normal. Make sure you have alerts enabled for my channel so you don't miss that. Everyone click here for my video on that big House of the Dragon Elizabeth Olsen announcement. And click here for my House of the Dragon Episode 3 video. I'll update the link as soon as I post that Episode 3 video. Thank you so much for watching. Everyone stay safe and I'll see you guys in the next one.